Hi there, my name's Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be looking at amplitude envelopes. In order to apply our amplitude envelope uh, to control the volume of the sound um, over time, we'll, uh, we'll need to start with um, a sound that we can do that. But before we do, um, let's just have a quick look at what we're talking about here visually. So we've got sound that uh, lasts over time and in order to give it um, a shape we create a whole bunch of lines. We use the V-line object in particular. Um, this is the pretty standard um, ADSR attack, decay, sustain and release envelope um, and we will get to that um, in this video. So back to starting with a waveform that we can uh, listen to. We'll create a sawtooth wave. We'll do that um, with a phaser object. The phaser object will pass it um, a frequency. And we need to scale it. So the audio input times 2 minus 1 will turn this phaser into a unipolar waveform that we can use. I'm going to put a volume control down here and send that output to the out to the audio output. Um, we need to give our audio output volume a volume control. So we use a number box ranging from 0 up to 1 to do that. If we connect that up, give some frequency that we can hear. There we have our um, sawtooth waveform that we'll use for this um, exercise. Okay, so now it's time to create um, uh, an envelope for that. Well, in fact, I think I can leave that there, just turn the volume down. So we've been turning the volume up and down manually. We can do that like so, but uh, it's not very performable. So what we're going to do instead is use um, the V-line tilde object. Uh, this object will create a line, um, a ramp in a sense from one value to a target value over a certain period of time. Um, and then that will control our volume. We can simply put our number box in there and everything will work as it is and the V-line turns that into an audio signal and out. So just for safety we can keep that there. But more importantly the V-line will take a message and we use a message box for that. And the format for the V-line messages are sort of threefold. So we say a destination uh, value, so we want to go to the value of 1. We tell it how long we want to take to get there, let's say 500 milliseconds, um, and then a delay before this line should start, and our delay will be 0. So if we connect that in and then click this message, we get that fade in. So it's going from our current value, which is 0, up to 1. Takes 500 milliseconds to get there with um, no delay. We can then do a comma and put another message. We could say go to 0, take another 500 milliseconds. Um, this second line will need to have a 500 millisecond delay because we have to wait for the first line to conclude before we start the second line. And so this is now an amplitude envelope. If we do something which is a little bit more um, musical, we get this kind of percussion envelope with a very fast start, only five milliseconds, and then a delay. Now a delay for the second line sh should change as well to five milliseconds. So as soon as this attack has been done, then we'll start our decay down, like so. We can make the uh, time longer, like that. 
Now one thing I want to introduce um, at this point is that these lines, um, like our diagram that we showed before, these lines are all linear, they're all sort of straight lines up and down. But often in musical envelopes, in acoustical sounds, um, the envelopes are not straight but they're sort of more exponential, sort of more curved. Um, we can approximate that pretty easily by multiplying the uh, line value to itself like so and then out and then when we play that envelope hopefully you can hear that it has a more gradual tailing off um, which is more like what we would expect um, in musical instruments so let's do that little trick for now just so all our envelopes sound a bit more realistic so that's all good and well um, but let's now introduce um, the idea of having a separate release from the attack. So this envelope works fine if we've got a percussive sound but if we want a sound say from a piano or a MIDI keyboard then what we'll need to do is have a, an envelope for the on and an envelope for the off. So let's get um, some MIDI input. Uh, you will see that the middle inlet from our note in is the velocity um, and when I play my MIDI device I get a value for on and then off is zero another value for on off is zero I'm going to get different values for on because I've got a velocity sensitive uh, controller but off is always zero and we can use that fact um, to help us out there is an object built into PD to help us out with that um, and that's called strip note and it will take in the pitch and the velocity um, and it will output the pitch um, and only when we get a note on so at this point if we a bang there as well so you can see visually when it's being triggered it's on so this left outlet provides us with the um, MIDI note number that I play we can use that to control our frequency by using the MIDI to frequency object and I can pass that up here and if we turn our volume up I can control the frequency of our sawtooth um, in that way so it's all good um, the value that comes out the other side of the strip note is the velocity so I can and only for the note ons so I can use this velocity to control um, how loud in a sense our envelope is going to be. I'm going to get a message. $1 is an argument which is going to be this uh, the value that we pass to it here. Um, and that's going to represent the peak of our sound and then we're going to say how long how quickly do we going to get there. We're going to continue with our very fast attack sound here. But we don't want to pass 106 because that is too high volume. Our maximum volume is just 1. So we want to divide by 127 to put that into the appropriate range from 0 to 1. Um, and then that can be passed to our V line like so. Um, and when we do that we will then get a sound on but it's going to stick but it's okay it's on I can manually turn it down it's on manually turn it down I'll play softer and so you can see the velocity is working there so now what we need to do is get the um, off to create a release I'm going to use a select object to look for that zero value which I know is the velocity that comes off there 
and if we use a bang we will see that when I'm on and then off goes bang the moment we still get stuck notes because we haven't finished that so we can create um, another um, message for our release um, and this message will mean we'll go to zero and let's take um, a thousand milliseconds to get there so it's got the similar shape to what we had before um, this message will be triggered whenever the off message happens um, and then that will get passed to the line so now we have on and off on off so we have now an attack and a release we also have sustain whilst I hold my finger down on the keyboard when I release so we get attack sustain is just maintained whilst I don't send a release and then as soon as I send release it goes so we've got attack we've got sustain and we've got release what we don't have um, is a decay object so we can add um, a decay line so after our attack we can say look perhaps go to half the volume take 500 milliseconds to get there wait 5 uh, milliseconds so we get our attack before we begin our decay I mean play so we get an attack and it falls to half volume and down so this works okay uh, except this um, sustain level that it decays to is fixed and even though our velocity is not so it might be that we play a very soft sound and then in a sense it's rising um, instead of decaying uh, so we need to um, fix that up what we really want to do is to say that this number is another variable which is actually going to be 50% uh, of this um, attack sound so half that so there's a few steps we need to do one is just to do the maths which is going to make it half so that's going to be half that sound is going to be the second um, variable value the next thing we need to do is be able to pass both of these values into this um, message box to do that we use a pack object the pack object will um, join together uh, that and this so that first value is going to be number one and this second value which is half of it's going to be number two and that's going to go um, there's one other thing which we need to do just to be tidy and that is to make sure that the um, right inlet goes before the left because it's the left which sends the signal because that's the hot inlet um, in order to make sure that those things happen in the correct order I'm going to use a trigger object um, and with two outlets so when the numbers passed in here this trigger object ensures that the right outlet happens first and then the left outlet happens second so we make sure that the order of operation um, for our uh, things entering the pack is correct so now we always get a decay regardless of what our velocity is we decay to half of that velocity amount and then our release is triggered as we finish our note by lifting our finger off and triggering our release so there we have um, our ADSR envelopes um, using the V-Line object I'll see you in the next video